It's about that time, beautiful souls. I am so happy to announce that on Ready, Set, Real Estate, again, we are bringing more phenomenal, special guests, great guests, great people, great information, great missions, great movements to the show. And I am so happy to do that. So if you are ready, (laughs) that's about that time for you to get ready, set, Real estate, I am so stoked. So today's guest is the founder of Kids Who Bank, Jatali Melanton. And I hope I say that. She's got such a beautiful accent. She's a beautiful spirit and she's doing amazing things. And I am so honored to have her as a guest on my show today. And as you know, I'm just connecting with people who are doing amazing things for the youth and young adult and just the overall general community, Uh, real estate literacy, financial literacy, all that information is so relevant because, you know, it's not being taught in our, our mainstream educational system. So I thank you for joining and watching us grow, watching us grow our platform and communicate with you this valuable information. So she is, again, author of Kids Who Bank, and she's got an entire uh, I love that she is she's actually a youth financial literacy coach. Now, you know, I go by super agent, but I am bringing uh, the youth financial literacy coach to you today. And I'm so excited to do this. So as she um, gets ready to sign in, I just want to just give you some information that I'm going to plug in here. She's on social media, on Instagram at Kids Who Bank. I'm going to plug in her social media and just check her out. If you have not uh, had a chance to plug in with what she's doing, do so now and uh, connect, follow, stay in touch. I'm like so excited. So that's Kids Who Bank on Instagram. And let me just drop in the website here as well. She's at kidswhobank.com, and you can stay in touch with what's happening along with, I love this, she actually has Kidpreneur Awards, and that is super, super cool, Kidpreneur Awards, and I'm so excited for that. Um, So she's coming on, she's here, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yay. I love when people can hear me because they smile so bright. Your face (laughs) just lit up. And I was like, we're in. It's a go. Awesome. I was just like. I, I just ran from teaching a class and I was like, I walked through the door and I was like, throw everything onto the floor, grab the computer, let's go. Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. And you look great. It looks like we have like minds today. We're doing this reddish burgundy color. So yes. I'm so excited. So what I was just sharing, uh, I was just setting the stage as I do with most of the guests, letting the people know we get we get about a thousand touches. Um, over various groups across the country. And I love social media for this because we are being, we're able to innovate our message and just really get this information that, you know, we're both passionate about. And so anyone that knows about super agent, like I'm all about literacy, I'll be real estate literacy, financial literacy. And I was just saying, hey, super agent brought the youth financial literacy coach to you today. So coach is in the building, y'all. Please say your name for me, even though I say Jatali and I love your accent. I don't know if I was saying it correctly. Say it for me, please. (laughs) My name is Jatali. Um, yes. You're saying it properly. Um, so it's funny. The Italians and I feel like people of other cultures tend to say it properly. But then New Yorkers always butcher it. So they're always like, Jetli. I've even gotten Jetli. I'm like, no, it's J-A-T-A-L-I. 
So you're doing perfect. You're doing great. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. So I just wanted to just come on and I, I'm on your website. I plug that in. So that's on screen. So people can actually view this now. They can jump on your website. And I was sharing that you are the author of Kids Who Bank. And it's really more of uh, kind of like a movement that I started. I see you've got a plethora of workshops. You've got Kidpreneur Awards, which I'm so excited about, and you'll share more about that. But let's just jump on in and tell us, um, just share with us why Kids Who Bank? What has inspired this uh, literary work for you? Um, I worked in finance for 13, going on 14 years. And in that time, I always met adults who seemed to have an issue. Um, or understanding wants versus needs. So even if I was a young one in the room, I would have people who were in their 40s and 50s come and borrow money from the 20 something year old. And I'm like, why are you borrowing money from me? Like, why don't you have your own savings? And why are you having budgeting issues? Right. And it wasn't just, you know, a one time temporary problem, but the same person who would borrow money, maybe three weeks later when we would all get paid, would go and buy a Louis Vuitton bag or something of the nature. And it wasn't just women, but it was men as well. You know, the men would go buy a nice new Hugo Boss suit or Giorgio Armani suit. And then the next following week, I would hear him in the office asking a coworker for money. Um, so I realized budgeting and these things were, in an issue, were a major issue, which is why for my first book, I made that the focal point. Right. So the first book was um, this, Once yeah. Versus Needs. You could kind of see it. I, it looks great. It's perfect. Yes. And, um, you know, I, I touched upon wants versus needs because I felt like, especially for our youths, we have to start drilling that into them from young. Because right. honestly speaking, if our kids aren't understanding the concept of depreciation and budgeting and the importance of knowing what is a one and what is a need, we're already putting them at a disservice. Oh, yes, yes. And I'm so happy you said that. I just want to reiterate for our audience, because it's one of the things that we do in consultation with buying wants versus need. I want the five bedroom house. <laughs> what do I need right now? And continue if something happens and you take a budget cut, do you have enough savings to pay your mortgage for a few months? And, you know, um, I always tell people in, in becoming a successful person, diversification and investing is very key and important. And that goes telling our children, I tell our adults, I tell everyone that. So I, you know, people will be like, what are the ways to diversify your portfolio? Real estate is number one in my, in my idea, because it's one of the things that, you know, if you really put in that work, you know, with $10,000, you can purchase something. And most of us touch $10,000 in our lifetime. Come yes. tax time, most of us get $10,000. Yes. So when you think about it, act like you didn't get that money for your tax season and put that into investment property or things of that nature. And you can see a world of a difference versus just taking that money and taking care of a couple of things. And then there's no investment or putting them in savings. It's great to have savings, but if you're not doing anything with that, with that money, then in a way it just kind of sits there. And as everything in life increases around you, that money just sits there. The money's not increasing, but life is increasing around you. You know, right. so when you think about it, milk gets higher, bread is more expensive, yeah. everything is more. If you're vegan and you want to eat healthy, that is expensive. Yeah. And when you think about that, then you turn around and you say, oh, well, I have 100,000 in my savings account. 100,000 in five years will be almost nothing. Right. So we have to kind of think ahead for that. Wow. Very powerful. Very powerful. And I, you guys, uh, those who are watching us now on the live stream, jump in and say hi, hello. Those who are catching us on the replay, thank you for watching. And I just dropped her website in so you can connect with her, post the show. You can follow her on her social media. But this is just so, I'm so in love with you. You know this, right? Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, I like just, Thank I mean, you. can you imagine my surprise when I found someone who was doing something specifically for teaching youth real estate? Right. I mean, that was amazing to me. So I was just like, yay, there's more of me. I thought, right. you know, and, um, yes. I knew gonna I was going to add on to, I was going to add on to that because that's exactly how I felt. But here's what's beautiful about this. I thought about this this morning that there's this magnetism happening, right? And I sure as you started, you started to now magnetize more of you. You just said it, there's more of me out there and that's what's happening. And we wear the same color, so. <laughs> that's the magnet, you can plan it. <laughs> yes, yes. So, um, 
Yeah, it's exciting because, you know, honestly, so now we have a fine, I have a finance curriculum. It started out with a book that I released November 2016. And then that following January 2017, we went to our first school with the finance curriculum. And now this school year, that's going to be basically our first year in in, um, business. We're about to go into 91 schools. (gasps) So like heart attack. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know how we're going to fulfill all the orders. But I am like contracts are coming in i'm like yes we'll take it we'll be there and you know it's not everything is not about the dollar bill because some of the schools are paying and some of the schools can't afford to pay but then they're saying that we want this knowledge so then regardless i try my best to work with what they can do and at least even if it's not the full curriculum do a couple of workshop courses for the kids because honestly these are the children who need it it's our kids who need it everyone from the inner city schools to the more affluent schools And it's funny because the kids in affluent schools, I feel like almost kind of have this, well, I don't need to know this knowledge because I'll just hire someone to do it. Mm. And then Mm. I noticed that the kids in the inner city schools, when I come into them, they're almost like, give me more information. What else can I do? Can you give me more websites? Where can I get a grant or funding from my business ideas as a youth? You know, they're asking the questions that give me my passion and give me the air that I need to breathe. Yeah, right. but then I feel like in affluent family areas, those schools, the kids are kind of like, I'll just hire someone. Mm. I don't really need the money. My dad is rich. My mom is rich. And I'm like, oh, OK, that's nice. So, you know, um, you know, I always say reciprocation is important. So right. Where we get a contract in a school where we're, we might be getting a lot of money, another's contract is smaller, but it's as equally important because it's all about the youths. Right. Oh, my gosh. Do you got... <laughs> She, you're like my favorite person. <laughs> Thank I'm you. Like, I, I am like when you said that because I I wasn't privy to that. So I literally people are witnessing a very genuine reaction that I don't know if it was microscopic. They could see goosebumps touch my entire body when you said you were in 91 schools because that is just amazing. It's so needed, and especially when I think about. We're talking about local, but I will share this with you. Canada, and that's been a place I've been following as well, they don't have a financial literacy curriculum. They have a a youth advocacy program that they are also wanting to, they've gone surveys and they're trying to reach out to the higher ups to say, our children need this. It should be in the ninth, 10th grade that we're teaching them the importance of financial literacy. So um, you go, yeah, you're already there. And I, I'm about to go to Canada too. So, you know, um, I actually recently, and, and it's all about networking. As, yes. It's funny, um, as a person who's from the finance world, for right. two seconds in my younger ages and younger years, I wanted to get into the like fashion show industry and things of that nature. And I would attend fashion shows and, you know, I had fun with it. And then I was like, I prefer my numbers. So it was been a years, it's been years where I was kind of behind the desk, behind the scenes. Right. And now this is forcing me to kind of socialize more and travel more. Yeah. And um, at first I was against it because I was like, why do you need to go to this pretentious dinner? And why do I need to smooth this person? Like, what are they going to do? Is we're going to still have to have a meeting to discuss business. And then I realized that networking is very different now. And networking is actually essential and key for your business now. So um, it's funny, I can honestly say that a majority of the schools that we're going into are through networking. I would wow. speak at a, on a panel at an event and then somebody would be like, will you be willing to come to Compton, California? I'm like, yes. And they're like, you're not afraid. I'm like, no, for what? Like, are there youth there who need to learn the knowledge? Yes. That's all that matters to me. Right. So. You know, um, and it's networking that we're getting more souls. It's networking that we're making the connections and the keys that we need. And it's through events like this, like your show, which is amazing to me because now I'm going to reach more people. And we're, Absolutely. you know, like this year we're going to be in Malibu. We're going to be in L.A. We're going to be in um, Azusa. So when we're going to these places, these moments are key because there may be somebody like, hey, I have a church or an organization. Can you come out? And that's what it's about. Right, right. That is so amazing. And I just have to touch on Compton, California, because it is one of the places that um, various partners, friends, broker owners and investor partners that I know have been born from, born out of. And there is great talent there. There great is talent. So smart. They're amazing kids. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, like the kids that are there, they almost they ask you questions that make you think as an adult, like, hmm. 
wait, I never thought of that, you right. know? And then they're just so <laughs> eager to learn. They all seem to have like this ambition and the hustler's drive. Everyone is like a go-getter. Everyone is an entrepreneur in the making. Right. And, right. You know, and these are little kids, you know? Yeah. And I mean, I start from ages two years old to 18 on average, you know? And then we have workshop for adults, but I predominantly focus on children. So perfect, for me, perfect. it's like you speak to a four year old and he's like, I make a soap line of organic shea bars. I'm like, and then he's four, but then you see him mixing it and you see him talking about, I want lavender oil in it. And you're like, how's a four or five year old doing this? But this is what Compton brings out. You That's know, this right. is what right. our inner city kids have. They, if you give them the knowledge, give them the tools, they'll excel. Oh, my goodness. And you touched on. So I just want for those of, uh, who missed it, I was going to ask what age group is your younger audience. So would you just remind us again? So we do from ages two years old, technically to 18. Wow. So for two years old, I have a second book, which is releasing this December 2017. Um, and that book is going to be a picture book, which gives them little financial tips. So like in one of the stories, which I'll share, a uh, little girl has a $20 bill. And she goes to buy a toy that's $19.99. And when she goes to the register and puts it down, the lady says, you know, $21.78. And she's like, no, something is wrong. And then she looks at her mom and she looks at the lady. And the lady's like, well, you forgot the tax is $21.78. And she's like, what are taxes? And it's a six-year-old six -year little girl in a picture. And her mom is like, you know, tells her what taxes are. And then the lady goes, oh, well, you know, there are coupons. You want to see if a coupon works and she's like what's a coupon and she's like a coupon sometimes a promotion that discounts your item and then she finds a four dollar coupon that brings her item down to 17.78 so in that quick little story um a six-year-old or a five-year-old or to learn and understand that twenty dollars if there are taxes depending where you are and what state you are it doesn't go that far you have to make sure you watch the taxes and the second thing is look to see if there's a coupon save some money um because we need to start explaining that to our kids from a young age um and there's a, a lot of stories like that there's a story about depreciation because if our kids don't understand that hey you bought this for 300 but after you wear it it goes down to 50 dollars of value or maybe even less that makes a big difference that makes them not want to spend the whole amount of money, all of their money on something that's going to depreciate. Maybe they're going to be like, hey, mommy, what can I buy that is going to increase in value after I purchase it? And right. we want to start giving them that mind frame as well. And then for the older kids, you know, 12 to 18, predominantly is this book. Okay. Um, and, you know, you know, I say an advanced eight to 11 year old reader, reader like such as, you know, the kids who are eight in reading Harry Potter, that would be a perfect book. But if they're that young and you're buying them the book, I say that's a time for the parent and the child to connect and maybe read the book together because there are gonna be certain terms that they might not understand. Um, but what makes my book different is instead of it being a story format, it's like a dictionary format, it's a story format. Um. So it follows um, six kids who want to purchase a game console for $500 and their parents say no. And then they decide to create little jobs and become entrepreneurs and find different ways to earn the money themselves oh. and sell their own toys at a profit and things of that nature. Um, and so basically watching that story, you get to kind of see the evolution, how they learn about money and what they decide in the end. Do they decide to buy eight different consoles? Do they buy just one console and share it because they're all friends? Um, you know, it's things of that nature. Right. So it kind of just, you know, and it's kids from different backgrounds because we're all a melting pot, you know? Right. So the Multi title character. Exactly. So the title character is a boy of color. Um, he's Nigerian and um, Cabo Verde, which is in uh, West Africa. And then, you know, his best friend is a Jamaican kid. And, you know, there's just a plethora. There's an Irish character. There's a Muslim character. You know, there's just people from all over because I wanted to kind of That's display right. that this is what New York and the United States is. Right, right. Very, very, very important, very powerful. You touched on so many things that I, I wanted, and this is what I, because I get asked a lot in terms of the edutainment and introduction of real estate to the youth. You have to be, I would say, very unique person to be able to do what we do in terms of uh, relating this information. And when you talked about the story for the next book on the younger audience, it resonated with me because I use a shopping cart scenario in the real estate. And as I talk about needing closing, uh, being able to need uh, save for closing costs 
And I talk mm-hmm. about it's the equivalent of taxes going to the store. You, you, you know, the game console, you budgeted for X amount, but you need for taxes. You can't just go into the store and say, I have the exact amount and walk. They're not going to let you walk away with that. So mm-hmm. you really, yeah, you touched on that so perfectly because we're, we're covering the principal amount and the closing and the taxes that you need. And then the other thing that you you shared, which is very significant about what we do uniquely with our workshops, it's in a family setting because kids don't come by themselves. Uh, families, um, those who are raising the children, those who feel that this is important information are seeing and learning together. And that's what has been so that's monumental awesome. about that's this. Perfect. And yeah, that's perfect. They, yeah, they're learning together. And, and so I really appreciate people like you and your team that is doing this work because it is creating a intergenerational conversation about money that is long overdue. But I'm so excited because the time is now, it's on time, and it's being well received, and I'm just so stoked about it. <laughs> I am too. Um, and you know what gets me about it is I've heard for years that oh, I wish they do- they they did this in the school systems, and I just never understood why no one tackled it. Okay. And then even when I was going to tackle it, um, I had a couple of people who I asked their opinions and they would tell me, oh, I don't think this is the right time for this. And I'm not sure if this is the right course mm. of action. And, oh, do you really feel like the kids are ready to learn this? And then those same people after shooting down the idea, when I created it and then the platform was brought into life and then it started going into schools, they were like, oh, this was amazing. What made you think of it? And I was <laughs> like, so I might never have gone through this going through with it if it was for you right. but because I believed in what I was doing and because I was passionate about what I was doing and I was like well whatever you say it doesn't matter I just have to believe in myself I see the difference and mm-hmm. now look at what we're doing and we're touching right. all these kids and all these lives and you know that's why we started to create the Q&A panels for adults because I realized that we can't just focus only on the children because if they're getting the knowledge but no one's reaffirming it at home then it's kind of like one hand washing the other. You write in with one hand and something is just washing your right off before right. you can even get the information. So, and it's been really interesting to see the parents coming out and asking the questions and getting in there. Right. Oh my gosh. That's just, uh, I am so overwhelmed. I don't know why I'm so emotional. I'm so passionate with you right now about this. Oh, I love it. That means good to me. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I'm just, Especially because um, when we talk about at this point in time and and you touched on believing in yourself and I wanted to just kind of what is it important in terms of the work that you're doing is passionate to to know that you're doing this on purpose. And yes, it's important. Um, But what is it what I guess would be the one key thing that resonates the most with you that parents are getting it, teachers, community activists, those that are supporting our our youth community, what would be the most key added value you would want them to be receiving from the work that you're doing? That representation is important. Mm -hmm. Um, We hear about the celebrity. We hear about the person who's a multimillionaire, billionaire, um, but we don't get to access them. We don't really get to actually sit in front of them and hear them voice. And it's different seeing a picture of someone or hearing an interview on some prestigious channel talking about it than actually physically having them in front of you and actually being in a room and being able to be soaking in that energy because you spend all of this time to talk about affirmations, words of affirmation and believing in these things and being in the right circles and creating the right rooms and being in them. But normally those rooms are like $300 a plate. You know, you know, if you go to an event, it's like $500 to enter, $1,800 to go to this event and talk to this person. And then even then, it's not really a setting where you get to pick their brain or get to really assess their their knowledge. So I think representation is very important. I think it's important that we're getting out there, we're getting to schools and talking to our youths and letting them know that we actually do care once we reach where we're going. You know, rather it's real estate moguls who are doing very well in closing like yourself, it's more right. important that you'll come out and say, hey, look, I'm a woman of color. I'm closing deals. No one's closing the door on me. Right. I close as many deals as anybody else from any other race, any right. other male or female. And it's important that they can see that we can do it as well as anyone else. 
Great. Well said. Well said. Well said. I, well said. That just um. That just um. I, I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy too. I can't wait to see the video clip. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm so happy. So tell us, we're getting ready to wrap up. I've got your social media up. I've got the website up. She is the author, youth financial literacy coach and founder of Kids Who Bank. You can visit her website at kidswhobank.com and stay connected, learn more of what's uh, what's up next. And she shared just a plethora of information. And as she talked about representation, this is exactly why this platform was founded. As you know, I am founder of Real Estate 100 Youth Foundation, which introduces real estate literacy careers and empowerment to our youth and young adult community. And it brings people like her to your world. So you can see and identify in order for you to relate to the, the real experience of what's possible. So I am just so happy, so amazed. And um, please tell us what's up next for you. What's new? Any new workshops? I know you just did one and you invited me and I was like, I would love to fly to New York, but not right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I guess our next biggest event is going to be our Kidpreneur Awards. So um, for any parents who has a child between the age of 6 to 18, 17, 18, if they're 18, they have to still be in high school. They, kids around the United States right now are submitting business plans in the hopes of winning the funding to start their business. Wow. So um, my company will be giving 2500 to a, a child between the ages of 6 to 11 and then $5,000 to a child between the ages of 12 to 17 years old. This year we gave kids, we had two winners. Um, but they didn't want to have like the big award. So this year, April 2018, we're going to do the big award and we're going to pick two new kids as well. And we don't just give them the money and say, create a business. We actually right. hold their hand and we have manufacturers and production companies. And we have, you know, let's say if they're creating a game, we're going to have someone or someone to help them produce it and bring it to fruition. Um, and then we're also going to teach them how to manage and create the revenue. Right. So, you know, if they do get money, QuickBooks trainings, I'll do a QuickBooks training with them and things of that nature. Um, so the Kidpreneur Awards will be highlighting those kids and it'll also be highlighting um, various youth and adults alike who are giving back when it comes to financial literacy empowerment and entrepreneurism empowerment in our communities. So, um, you know, we have some surprise guests who will be the Kidpreneur Awards. Um, but in December, at the end of December, for January 1st, for the new year, we're going to rep we're going to make a big flyer and put it out there. Like, who is going to be the big face for the Kidpreneur Awards? Right. Oh, I, you guys, I... <laughs> You have to connect so with you her. Can find me for that. You have April 2018. Start looking at tickets. <laughs> I have a, a discount on flights if you want it. And um, I have a discount for hotels as well. We'll say we'll Wonderful. talk after yes. tonight. And um, you know, once we have the exact date in April, we're working on a very big guest, and he um, has us waiting to see what date is gonna work best for him in April. And once we can lock and solidify that then we'll know exact date for the April 2018 Kidpreneur Awards, which is also Financial Literacy Awareness Month. So it yes. works out perfectly. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that was a lot. Was and, a I just lot. Think and I just think about the work that we, you're highly creative and I <laughs> I could see that. And Thank I just, could, I can only wonder how, what your mind, like what resting period looks like, because you just said you, you're going to do hands-on <laughs> QuickBooks training as well with them. I thought I was doing the most. <laughs> I've got interns right now. I've got two young interns that I'm working with real estate with them. So I could only imagine, but it can be done. It's one breath at a time. It's, it comes with through the supportive team, people who believe in us. And I thank you. I love you. You are my sister and I appreciate you. you taking the time, especially you said you had workshops and classes and I know we've been trying to coordinate this time. So I thank you all for tuning in. Learn more about kidswhobank.com. Again, Jatali, I love to say it. I, I, my accent, where Please maybe I'm, my name. I feel like I'm, I'm back home in Italy or something, talking to like family. Like I love it. So um, <laughs> I'm Jamaican Italian and Cabo Verde, and like for my family, it's all ethnic. So everyone says Jatali, and then you know I come here and they're like Jetali, and I'm like. <laughs> Who's that? You know, so when I say my name, I'm like, yes, I'm back home. Everyone knows who I am now. Like, right. yes, <laughs> it's yes. awesome. Thank you so much, Lisa. 
Thank so, you. And we'll bring you back that? on after we definitely want to stay in touch with what you, what's happening because you definitely are skyrocketing and it's because it's Thank needed. You. And and we do this to spotlight what other people do or what other people are doing with their creativity, their gifts, their talents and their experiences. And you always win when you give back, you guys. It's it's like it's. 100%. You always win. It's a win, win, win for you, for the other person and the universe. That's just how this works. All right, you guys, stay tuned and we'll stay in touch. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. See you soon.